The NBA Most Valuable Player exemplifies the greatness by an individual player based on their amazing regular season combined with terrific numbers, exceeding expectations throughout 82 games combined with team success. Throughout NBA history, the very best player, at least in the top 5, usually wins the award. The Michael Jordans, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and LeBron Jameses of the world all won the award multiple times. None of their MVP seasons were surprising by any means. How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. A couple shocking players won the award where nobody could have predicted heading into the season. Here are 10 MVP seasons nobody saw coming. Number 10, Bob McAdoo, 1974-75. In only his third season, the 6'9 center posted insane stats, 34 and a half points, number one in scoring, 14 rebounds, played a whooping 43 minutes a game, only 23 years old. The Buffalo Braves won 49 games, finished third in the East, ahead of his time offensively. He was nowhere near the best player in the league. While Kareem's team struggled, Rick Barry's team finished first in their conference, averaged 31, 6 and 6, a better all around player, and won the title, finished fourth place, since he was the most hated player in the league and the players voted. If it was up to the media, there'd be no doubt Rick Barry would have won the award. Number 9, Charles Barkley, 1992-93 Phoenix Suns. After a disappointing season with the Sixers, missing the playoffs, winning just 35 games in 92, wasn't even in the top 10 MVP voting, Barkley hasn't led his team to the Eastern Conference Finals before. Being miserable, stated he wished he would have been traded out of Philly sooner, would have had more playoff success. In exchange for Jeff Hornacek and two others, the Suns didn't have to part ways with all-star point guard Kevin Johnson. Finally, a good supporting cast, Dan Marley, KJ, Danny Ainge, and Richard Dumas, a solid bench, Barkley all of a sudden led the franchise to its best season, a record best 62 wins, average over 25 and a half points, 12 rebounds, 5 assists, flat out amazing all around, while Jordan, the back to back regaining MVP, won 61 and 67 games the previous 2 years, won just 57 games in 93, we all know MJ's the way better player, but his team won 10 fewer games, expectations were higher for the Bulls, so Charles received 59 of 98 first place votes, his transformation in media success was more dramatic than what the other stars accomplished. The fact that his numbers were better than the season before, winning 27 more games, showed how great he was, increased his production in the postseason, 26 and a half points over 13 rebounds, but fell to the superior Michael Jordan. Nothing to be ashamed of. Number 8, Moses Malone, 1978-79. One of the most underappreciated players all time, the 23-year-old was looked down upon. Drafted by the Blazers, traded to Buffalo two months later, within a week traded again to the Houston Rockets after two seasons in the ABA. The 6'10 center turned the franchise around from 28 wins the season before to 47 wins, became the best player on his team alongside Calvin Murphy and Rudy Tomjanovich from not being an MVP candidate to easily winning it over George Gervin, Elvin Hayes, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 25 points, almost 18 rebounds, number one in the league, over seven offensive boards. Nobody expected Moses to be this good this fast. Number seven, Will Chamberlain. 1959-60. The greatest rookie season in NBA history, which will never be top, the 23-year-old was unlike anybody the world has ever seen. 7 foot 1, a once in a lifetime athlete, averaged almost 38 points, 27 rebounds. The first rookie to lead the NBA in scoring and win the most valuable player award. His first ever game, 43 points, 28 rebounds. By far the most impressive debut ever. A man amongst boys, his size made him a bully in the post. If block shots were a stat, there'd be no doubt what would hold that record. A human cheat code, played for the Harlem Globetrotters before entering the NBA in 1959. After a 32-40 record without Wilt, the Warriors went 49-26 overall in his rookie season, fell to Bill Russell's Celtics in the division finals. Absolutely shocking how much better he was than everybody else during his time. Number 6, Karl Malone, 1996-97. At 33 years old, Malone became the oldest first-time MVP in NBA history. Year 12, posted numbers of 27 and a half points, 10 rebounds, 4 and a half assists, 55% shooting. Although he did have better statistical seasons in the early 90s, coming off a 7 game conference finals defeat to the Sonics in 96, it seemed like time was running out for Malone's Jazz, but shockingly won 64 games. Michael Jordan was far and away the best player.
player in the league. Chicago won 69 games. Without a doubt, MJ should have been the league MVP, but because of voting fatigue, somehow the mailman received 63 first place votes to Jordan's 52. Malone got a taste of his own medicine when Jordan dominated his team in the finals, leaving no question who was the superior player. Number 5, Bill Walton, 1977-78. Injury prone throughout his career, Walton missed at least 30 games each of his first two seasons. Out 17 games in 77, won 49 games, and healthy throughout the playoffs, winning a title, but played only 58 total games in 78, averaged 19 points, 13 rebounds, 5 assists, 2 and a half blocks. His last regular season game, February 28th, his team was 50 and 10 at the time. All of a sudden, 8 and 14 going into the playoffs. George Gervin played all 82 games on a 52 win Spurs team, came in second place, but guards weren't supposed to win MVPs back then. Only Bob Cousy and Oscar Robertson have done it at that point. There was no denying Walton's greatness in a small window. Missing one third of the regular season, any superstar who goes down before March would have had their MVP hopes crushed. Number 4, Stephen Curry 2014-15. An improbable rise to superstardom. Curry didn't explode until Mark Jackson was fired. Steve Kerr took over. Golden State won 51 games the year before. The 6th seed lost a tough first round series and 7 to the Clippers. Draymond Green emerged as a full time star. Andre Iguodala came off the bench. Andrew Bogut excellent at setting screens, doing all the dirty work. Curry averaged close to 24 points, 8 assists, 2 steals, 49% shooting, over 44 from 3. Having the best offense, the team averaged 110 points, 67 wins, which was out of the water. A season Kevin Durant missed 2 thirds of the year. OKC didn't make the playoffs. San Antonio's big 3 was getting old. Kawhi Leonard wasn't the top 3 player yet. LeBron back to Cleveland, struggled in the beginning, the breakout of a dynasty, Curry earned 100 of 131st place votes on October 14, 2014. CBS Sports had 9 players favored over Curry, a 21 to 8 odd. Anyone who predicted Steph would win the MVP before the season is simply a genius. Number 3, Derrick Rose 2010-2011. Chicago won just 41 games the season before, pretty much had the same exact team. No Kurt Heinrich, signed past his prime Carlos Boozer. LeBron signed with Miami Super Team in a time where James and Wade were dominating, Kobe, Nowitzki, Kevin Durant, Prime Dwight Howard, Melo, and Amari, amongst other superstars. Combined with the Bulls' injuries, Rose's backcourt made Keith Bogan's average 4 points a game, and the Bulls still won a league best 62 games. The trophy was unprecedented for somebody his age. Only year 3, Rose certainly earned the award, becoming the youngest player to ever do so. Number 2, Steve Nash, 2004-2005. A lot happened in summer of 04. Kobe and Shaq broke up, Dallas decided to let 30 year old Nash walk in free agency, signed the younger Jason Terry. The Suns won just 29 games before Nash's arrival, who wasn't even an all star in 04 and got destroyed by Mike Bibby in the playoffs. Dallas won 58 games without Nash, LA missed the playoffs without Shaq. Not only was Nash in the MVP discussion, many didn't think he'd be an all star or let alone even a top 5 point guard at the time, but absolutely transformed the NBA with the 7 second or less Suns, made everybody better. Amari averaged 26 a game, Sean Marion 19 and 11, Joe Johnson 17 a game, a league best, 62 wins, one of the most surprising seasons nobody could have predicted. It appeared Phoenix could have won the title but fell short to San Antonio in 5 games in the conference finals. Popovich simply D'Antoni's worst nightmare. Number 1, 1968-69, Wes Unsell, the second ever rookie to win the MVP award, regarded as the least deserving all time. At 6-7, his bullets won 57 games, a 21 game improvement. Having two 20 point scorers on his team in Kevin Lowry and Earl Monroe almost scored twice as much as Unsell, the fifth leading scorer on the roster. A year Jerry West missed more than 20 games, Willis Reed's Knicks won 54 games. Had way better numbers, should have won the award. Unsell also shockingly made an All-NBA team, his first and only time ever doing so. The lowest point average to ever win the award, 23 years old at the time, Unsell wasn't known for his numbers but intangibles. But Reed's Knicks would absolutely destroy, abuse, annihilate, and humiliate Unsell and the Bullets in every way imaginable in the playoffs. A sweep, the captain 28 and a half points, 15 rebounds, Unsell 19 points, 18 and a half boards. Reed proved he was the more superior player, perhaps the most random MVP in NBA history, just like Nash in 2005. Thank you so much for watching this video. Which one of these MVP seasons surprised you most? To the older fans, how shocked were you when Malone and Barkley won the award over Jordan? Which one of these guys didn't deserve to win the MVP? Let me know in the comments below. I love all of you. See you next time.